do believe so, Mayor. Well, good, good. Yesterday's edition. It's a four-page daily. 
with poetry and international news and the latest livestock receipts. I'm the editor, George Wright. I used to be a newspaper man in Chicago. But then I got the chance to come here and be my own boss. It was a fine opportunity, just fine. Of course, right now, New Brighton's a far cry from Chicago. But I take a look at what we've got, and I can tell we're going places. We've got the railroad, and one of our hotels has room for 150 people. Well, it was a little hard on my wife at first. You see, New Brighton doesn't have all the refinement yet. No sidewalks, no street lights, and every once in a while, packs of dogs will spook the cattle, and we get a stampede right through the middle of town. It makes it pretty exciting. <laughs> well, we bought a home in Minneapolis, and now that we're all moved in, she doesn't cry half as much anymore. <laughs> now our biggest problem is the way I smell when I come home from work at night. <laughs> of course, that's another thing about New Brighton. The yards and the fertilizer works give off an extraordinarily unique odor. Positively odoriferous, you might say. Sometimes when I ride the train home at night, people move away from me on the seat. But I don't let it bother me. I call it the smell of progress and prosperity. Yes, this little town's got a future. We've got culture and social events and politics and... And we've got problems too, Mr. Wright. And your newspaper's one of them. Well, do come in, Mrs. Beasley. <laughs> now, what's this all about? Well, I'm not supposed to know this, Mr. Wright, but rumor has it that the village council did not like your high bill for reporting on their last meeting, especially considering you weren't even at their last meeting. What? Why, being there has nothing to do with it. I do some of my best reporting on events I've never oh. been to. <laughs> Besides, how can they say I charge too much? Is 50 cents an inch too much? I use the smallest type I can. If I make it any smaller, we'll have to put their column under a microscope. All the same, I hear they're bringing it up at the next council meeting in front of the whole town. Well, I have to go now. Have a pleasant day, Mr. Wright. Have a pleasant day, Mr. Wright. <laughs> in front of the whole town, eh? Well, let them. The livestock report will not be compromised. Sometimes this hick town goes too far. All they do is complain and gossip. Why don't you live in town, Mr. Wright? Why don't you attend a hot fellow court meetings? Hot fellows, indeed. You know. you know, Mr. Wright, we'd love to have you and your wife attend our calico ball. Calico? Ira in a calico? She'd be on the next train back to Chicago. <laughs> you know, when I came here, they said I'd have international connections. <laughs> international connections? In this town, that's a German and a bullhunk squaring at each other on a street corner. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Wright. Well, Mr. Cat, come in. How are things down at the schoolhouse? Oh, just fine, thanks. But that's not why I'm here. Oh, really? Well, what can I do for you? I wondered if you would publish this announcement about the Literary Society's debates. Oh, debates, huh? Well, I've always been partial to debates. What's the topic here? Immigration or free enterprise? Or... Uh, no, no, nothing as serious as that. But it is a vitally important issue all the same. We're debating about who has the better time, the lady bachelor or the gentleman bachelor? Well, uh, bachelor, uh, uh, vitally important. Uh, well, you know, Mr. Kent, I think I have just the right spot for this announcement. Oh, thank you, Mr. Wright. Good day. Just the right spot. Mr. Wright! Mr. Wright! You gotta come quick! There's a terrible fire down at the edge of town and it spread like crazy!
Pacific train. Well, I didn't want to be late. Uh, George Wright said he'd heard that there's an important representative of a, a big cattle combine coming into town today. Uh, so what? You, you make it seem too important, Mayor. It, it is important. Well, I've heard rumors that the stockyards south of St. Paul are, are fixing to horn in on our business. Uh, we've got to make sure New Brighton makes a good impression. And if I were you, Peter, I'd be mighty worried about my rolling mill if anything should happen to our stockyards. Oh, I agree, I agree. But look, uh, uh, it's early yet. Why don't we go down to the transit house and have a libation? Uh, you know, we haven't celebrated our election victory yet. Well, uh, you have yourself a, a libation, and, and I'll have myself a, a whiskey. <laughs> uh, maybe it'll calm me down a mic. Uh, I've been pretty worried about this uh, big shot coming into town. Oh, you worry too much, Mayor. <laughs>
Clayton. And this is Councilman Peter Friedland. Oh, sorry we were, we were late for the, uh, to meet you, but uh, we were tied up at a, uh, an official meeting at the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Richardson. Uh, right, right. Yeah, the name's Webster. Charles Webster. Oh, yeah. yes, yes. We've had word of your coming to town. Well, you have? Yeah. Well, I don't know about that, but I'm mighty glad to be here. Now, as I was saying, we're here to negotiate uh, some... No, 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 let's not talk business just now. Let's uh, get you over to the hotel. Uh, Matthew, uh, take the gentleman's bag. Uh, perhaps we can uh, persuade you to join us in a uh, libation uh, or two. <laughs> well, I guess that's how you tell Father she's the fancy pants fellas, huh? Yeah. Of course, I ain't such an important fella, but I do need a room for the night. Well, they come out with me, Mr. The trash is a real good place. And it's close to the stockyards of Vice Wayne. You can even visit your boobas if you want to. Say, do you really own 300 head of cattle? That's an awful lot. Well, the truth is I own more than 3,000 head. And I come here representing the owners of about 30,000 more. <laughs> wow. Are you going to bring them all here? To your Brighton? To our packing plant? Well, I'd like to, son, if I was sure this was the right place to bring them, but uh, I don't know. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Are you Hannibal Durkin from Montana? Well, yes, sir, I am, and who might you be? Well, I'm James J. Hill, Mr. Durkin, and I've heard a lot about you and those cattlemen you represent. Well, shucks, mister, and I expect about everybody's heard of you. Pleased to meet you. What are you uh, doing here in New Brighton? I rode down here from St. Paul just this morning just to meet you, Mr. Durkin. Oh, uh, this New Brighton's a nice enough town, but to my way of thinking, it's just a little primitive. See here, I've got a carriage right over here just for you. Get you down to the whole town. Oh, journey! I almost had him. You almost had him. What that fancy stranger have to go and take him away for? And what do you want with him anyway? He was just another cowboy. Jimmy, weren't you listening? Thirty thousand head of cattle. He wasn't just another cowboy. I think he was the guy the mayor was supposed to be. That fancy guy from St. Paul just wanted to snatch him out from under everybody's nose. I'm sure. 
sure you will be the first to you know. Ha, you usually are. Well, now that you mention it, Mr. Anderson, I thought you said you were going to be able to attend the meeting this afternoon. Why? Was there something or somebody who changed your mind? Oh, uh, certainly not. It was just a slow day at the shop, so I, I closed up early. Oh. Oh, all right, uh, that's enough talking. Uh, let's get started. It seems there's been some concern over unseemly behavior at uh, last year's Fourth of July picnic. That's right! And it was a disgrace to our town and the whole state of Minnesota. And we are going to change that. I have here a list I've compiled detailing explicitly with names in some cases the immoral abuses that occurred. I really don't see the necessity of discussing specific people. Besides, that was last year. I think if we concentrate on this year's picnic with plenty of activities planned for the children, for instance, it would be a much better use of our time. You should be worried about this list. We need the specifics to get to the bottom of them, and here they are. Uh, uh, Miss Niget is right. Uh, let's just talk over the events we have planned and see if anybody has any more suggestions. Oh, why bother with that? It's just eating, drinking, and good old horseplay. Everybody knows that. The only yeah. thing anybody gives a hoot about is a killing contest. Yeah. Well, ain't that right, Char? Well, yes, indeed. Uh, of course, there's the entertainment, the, the kickaboo singers, and the dance, too. Oh, that silly romantic stuff. Who cares about that? Many of our young people do, Constable. I enjoy dancing myself. <laughs> I do, Miss Cat. Say that swell music. Uh, uh, a horse does have a point about the killing contest. It's an important part of our picnic, and uh, as a matter of uh, as a matter of fact, <laughs> our uh, our uh, the town has uh, our packing houses have put this town on the map, and the contest. It's a good chance for our men to show off their skills in butchering. Why, the people come from miles around for it, and, and the trains. The trains are always filled for our picnics. Yeah, but those trains also.
you see it happen this way. Horace, of course, being Horace, had quite a bit to drink that afternoon. He paid a visit to the outhouse just about the time the anvil shoot was getting started nearby. No sooner had he shut the door when an anvil came crashing down through the roof of the outhouse and landed right in the bowels of our fair city. Well, missed Horace, luckily, but it gave him such a fright he passed out cold. Fortunately, he came to just in time for the most important event of the day, the thing that everybody had been waiting for, the killing contest! Yeah!
today? Ah, uh, just a trim. Not too much off, though. Gotta look my best for the dance Saturday night. Well, is that right? Who's the lucky lady? Well, I ain't asked anybody straight out. Uh, us handsome devils have to keep our options open. <laughs> well, I heard that one of those new Polish fellas asked Stella Stanislavski to go. Stella Stanislavski? My Stella Stanislavski? Who told you? Well, the most reliable source in town. Oh, that's, that's, that's right. Miss Bisbon told me the same thing. In fact, I just saw Lizzie talking to three more Polish fellas down by the packing houses. Down the hatches, boys, here she blows. I saw
Oh, there's some folks from our church. Uh, how do you, Father Paul? Uh, and Jacob, I uh, missed you at Mass last week. Oh, those Catholics. I knew there was something I didn't like about them. <laughs> Vote for Behan for Pete's sake. Ah, uh, Martin, what do you have against Catholics? What do I have against Catholics? What? Well, you go to the Congregational Church, same as I do. Everybody's mad at him for the flood last month. You can't really blame the Catholics for making it rain, can you? Well, sure you can. The mayor told me they were all down at the church, praying like mad for rain. And, and when it came, they prayed too hard, and it, and it came like Noah's blood. Well, that's true. I had to take a boat to the barber shop. And all the mud in the streets? Huh. I guess you could say it's aggravating. Aggravating? It was more than aggravating.
begin? Uh, will you begin? Oh, thank you, ma'am. I asked myself in preparing for this debate, what makes being a lady bachelor so enjoyable? Nothing. It takes a husband to support a man. Come on, man.
at the Perry Beach on Saturday night. Uh, I have a feeling she'll be there with a lot of her women friends, of course. And uh, you might just drop in, too, if you get a chance. Uh, gee, Mayor, I, I just might do that. See, Mayor, what do you know about painting and sculptures? Uh, well, uh, favorite sections of the paper is the poetry section. And suddenly this section's gotten mighty popular with another young fellow in our town. Seems like he's been struck with a fit of culture. The lady is a teacher. She came to town last fall. And now to me she's life itself. My heart, my love, my all. Not bad, really. I guess it's pretty obvious who he's writing about. Good afternoon, Mr. Rice. Well, good afternoon, Miss Niquette. How are you? Oh, just fine, thanks. I came by to return this volume of poetry. It was very kind of you to loan it to me. Well, I was happy to. You know, it seems like we have our very own poet right here in town. Oh, uh, in New Brighton? Yes, indeed. As a matter of fact, I've published a few poems recently in my paper that might appeal to you. Oh, my goodness, it's getting late. I have lesson plans to prepare. I don't suppose you've read any of them. One or two. Of course, I think they're hopelessly sentimental. Well, I hear they're causing quite a stir. I venture to say these poems are the biggest excitement uh, since that tramp stole Mrs. Busybody's bloomers off the clothesline. I don't listen to rumors, Mr. Wright. I'm far too involved in my career. Well, yes, I dare say. But I think you'd be impressed by these poems. Some uh, folks think the uh, fellow's been writing about you. What? What the very idea? Well, yes, I've had quite a few young ladies up here clamoring for his name. They think he's pretty talented. Well, I'm not one of them. I couldn't care less about some poor lovesick man gushing his innermost feelings all over the pages of the Livestock Reporter. Well, you know, Mr. Cat, if you'd been here five minutes earlier, you'd run smack into the gentleman right here in my office. Um, who did you say he was again? Well, I didn't say, Mr. Cat. In fact, I can't say. It wouldn't be proper. Proper? Oh, yes. Journalist code of ethics, you know, never divulge your sources. It's the first thing we learn, strict confidentiality. Oh, well, I'm sure it doesn't matter anyway. Oh, uh, Mr. Kent. Yes? Uh, the poem. Oh, sorry. I forgot I had it. Good afternoon, Mr. Wright. You know, I have a hunch she's going to figure out who's writing these soon. And I feel like I'm having a part in this romance, too. One thing I try and do, though, is keep the worst of his poems out of the paper. Sort of a public service, you know, like this one. <laughs> I'm disarmed by her beauty, captured by her spell. I am the lady's prisoner, and it bothers me to all get out. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, true love. Miss Wright, Miss Wright, you got a trap! Fire! And through all they built, the most terrible fire I ever did see, it burns up in fear. Everybody, I feel you, Calvin. Oh, 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 sorry, Mr. Wright. What, another fire? Damn, not the rolling mill again. 
This could be big trouble.
sorry to hear about your rolling, though. Oh, yes, thanks. Everything burned down right to the last scantling. But uh, I feel sort of quite sorry, sorry for some of those new uh, workers we hired on. Some of those Polish guys can barely speak English. I just hope we can find new jobs for them. That is true. You're not going to rebuild the rolling mill? Uh, not this time. Iron <coughs> Daly is dead. Burned up and gone. deal for 30,000 head of cattle. Well, it's not my fault. I was the one who got stuck buying that, that phony salesman a $2 dinner. I thought the other guy was a filthy cowboy. He was a filthy rich cowboy, and, and you let him get away. Well, it's not my fault. Now, listen, uh, if we keep quiet about it, maybe no one will hear about it. Oh, what did I hear about <laughs> Thank you. 
Empire, you know. And that Minneapolis Stockyard scene better not try anything funny this time. keeps her promises. <laughs> Just try it here and pretend you'd rather not be at the opera. This game between Minneapolis Packing and Twin City Packing is always the big game of the year. And besides, it's important news for my paper. Oh, yes. Well, I'm here, aren't I, George? I consider it my wifely duty to accompany you to this baseball game. Oh, but I do so wish we were back in Chicago at the opera, where Madame Marcella Evelina will render an aria. Believe me, I much prefer the rendering that goes on in New Brighton. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great sacrifice you're making for me, dear. But after all, it's important for the townspeople to see you occasionally. Yes, well, let's sit down and get it over with then, George. <laughs> Ski to the baseball game, Ski? <laughs> that is not 
Marguerite. Miss Marguerite. Miss Marguerite. Mr. Anderson, you wanted to see me? Uh, yes, uh, that is, uh, I wanted to apologize. Indeed, for what? Uh, for, for winning the debate, of course. Well, you did a much better job than I did, and you should have won. Oh, really, Mr. Anderson, that's most kind of you. Do you really think so? Oh, yes, indeed. You spoke your mind out in front of the whole town. Huh. Well, some of it was a dance for these folks, but I did agree with a lot of what you had to say. Yes, sir. Oh, really, Charlie? <sighs> say, isn't it like you had it beautiful in the moonlight, the, the way that the water sparkles? Yes, I suppose it is. It reminds me of that poem. What is it now? <clears throat> the moon was a ghostly galleon tossed in troubled seas. Charles, that's from The Highwayman. That's my favorite poem. I didn't know you liked <clears throat> poetry. I read it every now and then. That reminds me. Do you ever read the poems in Mr. Wright's paper? The paper? You mean the new Brighton paper? Yeah. Oh, no, never. Hardly ever. Oh, you should, Charles. There's been some beautiful ones lately. I cut them out, and I have one right here. Her eyes are as blue as the summer sky. Her hair as dark as a starless night. Her skin is pure, as soft as milk. Milk? Did you say milk? Let me see what that. Wrong? Oh, it's supposed to be silk, not milk. <laughs> Skin like silk. Oh, that's George Wright. For what he charges me to advertise my barbershop in his darn paper, you'd think he'd do a better job of typing. Skin like milk. My foot, that's rotten. teacher too, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> and, and you got dark hair. Oh, gosh, I, I never noticed that. Charles, <laughs> did you write these poems for anyone special? Of course not, and who said I wrote them anyways? Well, you did in a way, and they're quite good from a literary standpoint. They are? I, I hope you're not offended. You hope I'm not offended? Why would I be offended? Oh, Miss Marguerite, can't we just talk? I thought you are good at talking. Well, like at the debate. I, I was just saying all that stuff the fellas expecting me to say. But you, you spoke right from your heart and showed everyone what a fine mind you've got. And you're teaching our young people that there's just more to life than butchering cows. And me? trying to say, Charles? I, uh, I, um, I wrote those poems about you, Marguerite, and you know it. I'm in love with you, and I have been since the moment I saw you. In love with me? Oh, I, I know, you got your career, and <laughs> I'm not nearly good enough for you. And as far as marriage goes... Marriage? Charles, I'm a teacher. A teacher can't be married. I have to quit my job. Oh, you mean you never think about getting married? Well, of course I think about it. But I've worked so hard, and there's still so many things I want to do. You don't understand what I'd have to give up if I decided to get married. You're right. I, I only understand what I feel. I'm sorry about the poems. I didn't mean for them to upset you.
give to me, say I do. There may even be some days when you'll be needing strength or two. We can run the race together, you still can guide and teach and touch. There'll be children yours and mine, and friends to love as much. Your tenderness is something that I have never known. And I can't close my heart to this new feeling that has grown. For me to love you, we share a brand new set of blood here, and, and we can't give up now. Why, you have saved our town, and you've saved my job. <laughs> Shops, I can't think of a better place than to raise a family. You know, it's not bad farmland. Mighty sandy soil, though. You can grow good crops. 
crops in sandy soil. Uh, squash, for instance. I've had some real prize winners. <laughs> Maybe someday, New Brighton could be squash capital of the world. <laughs> Long Lake last summer. Oh, it's amazing, so amazing. 